Cool. Okay, let's, let's get started. So our next speaker is actually Skyping, videoing, managing complicated technology that didn't work as usual in from the Netherlands. So uh, this is Vince Bean. Vince is the head, I think, head of, or possibly one of the heads of, or something, of uh, an awesome blockchain incubator in the, in the Netherlands. Uh, one called Brightlands and, and another one called TechOption. I'm probably going to talk a bit more about that. Um, I really want to get Vince to describe him today because he, so if you look up, uh, there's a podcast, I think I posted in the meetup group as well, there's a podcast by uh, Future Thinkers, um, and Vince uh, was interviewed on there, and I, I must have listened to it, like, I think it probably came out like, a year or two ago, and it's, I think still to this day, it's still the best podcast I've ever listened to about using blockchain for like actual, like, real, purposeful, social good stuff. I mean. Most of us tend to think of blockchain, cryptocurrency, and finance, fintech, exchange, insurance, and, and sure, it can be used for those things. But like for me personally, and, and I hope a lot of other people, like it's a bit boring. There's, there's other more interesting use cases that will help change the world for the better for everyone. So we're going to hand over to Vince, who's going to talk about some of his ideas and, and what he does. And and yes, yeah, so everyone, Vince means. <laughs> Well, how's everyone here in the energy in the room? Everybody excited? Yes. Yeah. Very good, very good. Okay, and I'm happy to talk. So first of all, um, yeah, I think uh, I sometimes wonder what a revolution looks like, uh, and I think Skyping in for the other side of the globe to all kinds of like-minded people also interested in a topic that's going to change society. For me, I'm very happy to be uh, invited by Nathan, and uh, very happy to speak to you guys. So uh, a quick intro from my side, um, I started out 15 years ago as a software developer uh, and I think like in 2012 uh, I got the first contact with, uh, with the blockchain thanks to Bitcoin and Ethereum popping up uh, and I built um, uh, BTC Direct which is one of the bigger exchanges here in Europe, uh, I think we now have a, a trading volume of 25 million a month, that's uh, now gradually uh, building up and it basically got me hooked on this technology. This was not just a technology, this was something uh, way, way bigger. Uh, like I'm, I'm 31 years old, I kind of missed the internet bubble, but this uh, this whole life, uh, I think I'm sitting uh, front row timing wise, and you guys as well. So uh, right now I'm working at uh, Brightlands, which is um, a super cluster of uh, innovation campuses in, in the Netherlands, and this basically means we have four innovation groups. Uh, tens of thousands of people working there, and uh, one of those this campus with focus on uh, leveraging blockchain and AI to tackle climate change. And this for me sounded like a very fascinating uh, combination to, uh, to tackle uh, tackle climate change. The the small story behind that in campus is that uh, one of its biggest investors is uh, APT, which is uh, a huge pension fund. They manage 450 billion in assets, and they feel that they, they can way more impact on society by leveraging blockchain than, uh, than almost any other, uh, on other thing. So they really try to facilitate now all kinds of, uh, of uh, blockchain startups and blockchain companies to start uh, working there. Uh, the campus is, uh, is an open innovation campus, so it means that we all work together on things before we actually start thinking about intellectual property, and preferably we try to keep things uh, open source. Uh, so at our campus, I think we now have like uh, over 200 companies here uh, that join in on these sessions and they build all kinds of new use cases uh, for the future. So um, before I dive a bit deeper, I would like to uh, uh, address a bit of why I'm so excited about this whole blockchain movement. <clears throat> and I think from my side, the, the biggest change is that we're going to see a shift from uh, content or box thinking into context thinking. And uh, if you look at bank accounts, for example, uh, every bank account is now a little box, and I cannot see your bank account and you cannot see mine. But on the, on the, on the blockchain, everything is visible to everyone, and therefore we can start putting things in context. And I think the, the whole value behind everything is often way more in the context instead of in the actual uh, content. Um, and I think this whole thinking of uh, thinking in context, like uh, if, for example, I purchased something in the supermarket and I can see where the supermarket bought it, I can see which farm it came from and so on, and you can start copying this, I think it's a way more uh, valuable way of looking at society. Like uh, we need to start moving away from products and we need to start looking at the stories behind products and the 
story behind everything that we purchase. And I think once we do that, we will start becoming more and more aware of the impact that we have on society. Like now, uh, every time I, uh, I go to a supermarket, I only buy things for the cheapest price because I don't know any better. I don't know that if I buy something for a very cheap price from the others, that uh, it, it will lose local uh, employment by local farmers and so on. And we, uh, as a consumer, uh, we barely realize how much impact we have on our, on our local environment. And I think once as consumers we become aware of the fact that everything that we buy impacts our local direct society, then uh, we can start case starting a revolution by uh, our own consumption. Um, one thing I always like to highlight is uh, this thing from philosophy, it's called uh, the Prismos Dilemma. I don't know who of you is with the concept of Prismos Dilemma. Anyone in the room with philosophy? Yes? Okay. I think the um, uh, Prismos Dilemma, if I explain it very simply, is um, uh, the concept that if two of us got, uh, got arrested and uh, uh, we were unintentional or like uh, we were uh, not guilty, that uh, we would uh, get like a potential deal to uh, to get out pretty quickly if we snitch on the other person. So we basically screw up the other person for our own benefit instead of uh, both and uh, staying in prison uh, long enough, but at least not uh, claiming guilt. And that's that's a concept if you look at that with the uh, blockchain, like for example the clothes I'm wearing, because I'm now not seeing uh, literally where these clothes come from. I don't see uh, this. Um, the sweatshop in Asia where the clothes come from or whatever, I as a consumer can hide from my responsibility uh, for purchasing these things. But with the blockchain, we will start seeing a shift where I will start becoming aware of what I'm actually buying and the for good practices start shifting from, uh, from uh, manufacturers towards us as consumers. And it's the same with food, it's the same with every kind of product that we, uh, that we have. Um, and I think, therefore, in the future, like the the, the, the currency of um, of what money now is, will uh, slowly fade away, and the new currency will become context. The story behind something will become way more valuable and saying something about it than um, than the actual than product. And I uh, think, like, money will start shifting more and more backwards to to becoming like one of the last things to exchange. You don't see any other um, other value in each other. Um, so, to give you a couple of examples of the things that are uh, happening right now uh, here in relation to, uh, to the blockchain space, is uh, one of the first things is called the plastic bank. I don't know if you guys are familiar with, uh, with social plastic or plastic bank. It basically means that all the packaging manufacturers, for example, uh, uh, pack for food for drinks and so on, they, um, they use a plastic offset token that they put on the blockchain. And uh, this token gives value uh, that anyone that has similar plastic can uh, basically claim. And the concept behind this is that uh, all the polluted beaches or the sea where the, the plastic is in, you can start picking up this plastic and claiming the value for it. And it's actually created by, by balancing out this offset mechanism from, uh, from the, the people that push it into circulation and on the other hand, uh, uh, giving the value to people that, uh, yeah, that have the pollution in their environment and don't have the uh, maybe the income to, uh, to clean it up or the, the necessary context to clean it up. Um, in regards to this uh, context, uh, uh, another startup that's uh, currently here is basically uh, changing how education uh, right now works. Because uh, here in the Netherlands, I don't know how it is in uh, Australia, education has kind of also become like uh, a product. People buy, uh, buy a diploma and once a diploma, uh, the whole responsibility from the, the university or the school for the person kind of face face away, and here in, the, in Europe you have a, a concept, for example, within the, in the sports world, if a, if a small amateur uh, club uh, trains like a, a young sports player uh, and he gets sold, every time the, the player gets sold to a new team, all the clubs that train him basically get a kickback fee for being part of the uh, the growth of this player, even the local amateur club where. So, uh, for example, here if someone gets uh, sold to. Um, Barcelona, like a, a small local club, uh, will still get uh, get a lot of money. And like the startup here is now trying to apply this model to uh, education. And basically, everyone that uh, contributes to your career uh, will have like a mini earning structure and a little relationship that keeps you guys connected and keeps you all uh, um, in relation to each other. And thereby motivated to go for each other's success and just uh, selling you the. Um, another thing is that uh, with this whole tokenization movement right now, 
Uh, we are now uh, tokenizing every part of the buildings that uh, our campuses uh, are made of. Uh, and this means like every panel of wood, every window, every uh, metal part, everything gets put, put on the blockchain and it gets uh, sold already to uh, a potential buyer that basically uh, purchases the right, the right once the building gets turned down that they uh, have the, the value of every part in the, in the, in the building and thereby they start moving cash uh, forward. Um, another thing is uh, uh, we're having a, a drinking water project uh, where basically you have uh, smart uh, drinking water taps and smart drinking water installations that uh, are connected all over the world and um, thanks to the blockchain you will have like an awesome mechanism that every time someone drinks a liter of water here it kind of pays a premium to uh, a liter of water at a, a different point on, on, on the world and actually every time someone taps they can see who they are affecting and they can see the impact that they have with every uh, liter of water they, uh, they drink Another part that we're uh, doing right now is um, uh, that we're actually mapping the trees uh, uh, in our gardens and uh, we have a small um, uh, mechanism where um, the, tree, the tree's GPS coordinate is put, uh, put in, uh, in the blockchain and every time someone walks past it, they make a micro donation for the tree being beautiful and getting air and all these kind of crazy things and actually, uh, we are now programming a, a contract where um, if there is enough money then in this uh, small account, the tree will be able to pay for planting the next tree. And thereby the trees will become programmable or programmable nature or connected nature, however you like to call it. And I think this is a mechanism we're going to see way more and more. Um, and one, uh, one other thing uh, I would like to highlight is, uh, is Mombotic. Uh, this, uh, um, this is a self-driving port. And actually the founders of the, this project, they looked at uh, how the car is now manufactured and they tried to make a car that's totally made out of open source and open hardware parts that anyone can model anywhere uh, in the world and, and can start building uh, locally. And to fund the manufacturing of these pods, they issue a local mobility point um, and this local mobility point can be claimed by the people building it. These pods, they drive on solar energy from local uh, energy uh, co-ops um, and it uses uh, local employment, uh, local funding, local energy, and, and thereby you keep Litho all the wealth around mobility uh, local instead of giving it to, uh, to big, uh, big foreign companies. And these are like uh, some, of, some of the ingredients that we, uh, we have right now here on, uh, on the campus. But I would like to make it a bit more dynamic because I see you guys are all sitting relatively still. So maybe it's interesting if we, uh, we start a small uh, Q&A or maybe uh, Shoot some questions. Points, uh, they have like a, a smart sensor, so you can use your uh, phone or an NFC chip to unlock the tapping of water. Uh, and thereby, the, um, the, the tapping points they are connected to other tapping points. So you basically have decentralized water grids where we constantly know how much uh, water is at each location, and we can unlock them by connecting uh, tapping points. So you can say, for example, uh, uh, if I tap water here in, in the Netherlands. That it unlocks a little of uh, water that is paid for, for example, in Australia. And every time that someone in Australia taps it, they can uh, you get like a feedback loop that I can see what my little of water impacted on the other side of the globe. So I can start seeing uh, if you would put a webcam on it, for example, with people that, uh, that I help with what I do. And uh, I think this is in the future more and more uh, going to happen. That you want to see what is the impact that I'm uh, having with, uh, with doing goods instead of just. Uh, Paying money to a good cost for these kind of things. Thanks. Okay. Hi, mate. Uh, just wondering, how do you fund these projects? 
Okay, so right here at the, at the campus we have a bit of a mix because uh, one third of the shareholders is this uh, pension fund, uh, one third is uh, the local government. They really get involved because they really believe that the, the whole blockchain model and, and how it's going to affect society is going to be like an engine for, uh, for our region. Uh, and the third is the universities and, uh, and the schools. Uh, and on top of this, uh, we created our own network fund base. Where um, yeah, all the, the the senior entrepreneurs here in the region they are uh, connected with uh, with government funds again, and they uh, they collaborate in uh, funding these projects. So you have to think in our case we have a, a fifty thousand uh, grant uh, to research the technical and economical feasibility of a project like this, and then uh, a two hundred fifty k convertible loan to uh, to develop the first uh, proof of concept, and after that it uh, becomes a venture capital. Cool, thank you. Oh, hi, I'm Derek. Uh, you mentioned the uh, blockchain project to tackle climate change. Uh, I was also curious yes. because we're, we're looking to do the same thing. Very good, okay. <laughs> yeah. And I'm sure so, many, many yes. things are getting better. Absolutely. I, I think that the most important thing right now is that um, every transaction, people are mostly basing on price. So if I go into, uh, for example, look at a buy product based on, uh, on the price tag and maybe a brand. But I think we will have a lot of different indicators in the future for everything. Like, for example, the distance that the, the product uh, travels or um, uh, the amount of energy used to, to create the product, these kind of things. And these are like, uh, we're now doing small pilots where uh, on the, from the moment that it's on the farm, for example, we start to track all kinds of parameters around products, um, and like location or energy usage or these kind of things that we start mapping out. And we're trying to make it visible to, uh, to consumers. And so that in the end, we start consuming as much as we can locally and um, as much as we can uh, based on uh, having the smallest footprint, for example. So what, what's, what's your uh, perspective on, uh, on that? Unit? I'm curious. Uh, we, uh, our, our, our consumers or our custodians, they, they make uh, energy coins for consuming green electricity. Um, yeah. And the uh, energy coins are a royalty coin. So. Okay. I think that's also in the, in the future now, you see this whole decentralization, of course, of, uh, of power supplies, of, uh, of drinking water supplies, uh, of all kinds of, uh, like here in the Netherlands, uh, I know you guys don't have the problem in Australia, but we're building a heat exchange. So you have a lot of uh, industrial sites that produce a lot of uh, heat, and we're now connecting like a, like a piping system where all the heat can get used by homes to, uh, to warm themselves. Uh, and we're going to install like smart, uh, yeah, smart devices basically to track how much energy you extract from that to this uh, to this roundabout of uh, of heat, so to say. Yeah, I don't know if you noticed, Power Ledger, who's also in this space, uh, uh, yeah. launched a successful uh, pre-sale ICO, raised nine million dollars in four days. Uh, they're they're both based <laughs> over here, so, so there's a lot going on in, okay. in energy from blockchain. Definitely. Nice. Definitely. Yeah. I think in the end. Sorry. Yeah, thanks. Nice. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think in the end, like the, the whole uh, thing is now. I'm I'm literally buying electricity uh, just for for the day rate and the night rate, for example, here in Netherlands. Um, but I think in the future you will literally have like a, a portfolio. Just how you have portfolio, for example, now. Uh, except then I see tokens like, okay, these are uh, naval energy tokens, these are uh, like a uh, solar thing from uh, the industrial side, uh, 20 kilometers uh, further away. And we will start uh, abstracting uh, a layer on top of, of, of the energy that will make it uh, yeah, way more uh, interesting to, uh, to trade. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, a Dutch businessman once told me uh, a Dutch saying, which was, uh, we bake the cake together, we eat the cake together. Is, is that true? That's very that's absolutely true. We're a very cooperative nation. So we're, we're a very small country. So if we wouldn't cooperate and share, like that, we would, uh, we would get hit in the other countries. So it's a nice Very good. I'm happy to connect. Yes. Hey, buddy. Um, there's an article recently called Barbarians at the Monetary Gate. 
and it's about how yeah. the rise of cryptocurrency and lots of enterprises going into decentralized systems uh, are actually threatening the whole of government over the rest of like the people that are voting them in. So I was wondering, you said that one third of your funding for some of these projects were from government. Um, do they know that yes. they're funding technology that's going to be fundamentally destroying their hold on their pockets? What are your thoughts? Uh, absolutely. Yeah, it's actually we have a pretty pro pro progressive uh, governor, and um, he's actually uh, he made a statement where he uh, he said uh, uh, I don't know if uh, and, like the whole government building here will still exist in ten years because you really start seeing a shift back where small groups of people start taking control over their own neighborhoods or uh, about uh, arranging a, a lot of things themselves and start depending upon uh, government. And this is actually something that's happening in this region um, uh, already. Uh, just before the blockchain whole movement started, but I think it will, it will push through, and I think this is also the the the, the dynamic that uh, blockchain brings. That in the past, if I, I didn't agree with how governments would control something or whatever, I couldn't do anything about it except for being voted uh, voted in uh, uh, a couple of years later. Now, uh, I think with blockchain, if, if you don't like something, you take the template of what the guy did before you and you adapt some parameters and you um, you come up with an alternative. And thereby the whole responsibility uh, starts shifting towards you as a citizen to uh, to make it better every day and not just uh, be consumer of government, but also start try to see how you can improve it constantly. And uh, I think here in, uh, in our region, uh, um, yeah, like a, a bit of background, just very briefly, is that we uh, we started uh, with mass employment here with uh, with the coal mines, and then we had like uh, the coal the coal mines closed, and then we had a lot of unemployment, and then uh, we had big uh, big offices moved here from the capital, and now again we have this unemployment uh, wave, and we need to come up with something new. And I think our government here locally really embraces this innovative change and focusing on. It is new society that blockchain and AI and these things are going to bring instead of just waiting for it to uh, to be a challenge. Yeah, so just a comment on that. Can you um, maybe talk to the Australian government about that? Because I'd, <laughs> I'd love them to have the same kind of thoughts. Okay. Thanks. I'll send it. Like, uh, we're we're going to make it happen. We're good. Thanks. Awesome. So I think uh, we're just about to run out of time. Any, any closing thoughts about, like, uh, is the future going to be a crypto authoritarian dystopia or is it going to be a, a beautiful utopia? Uh, for me, it's going to be a beautiful utopia, definitely. I think uh, the whole the whole shift from uh, just being relatively passive as a normal citizen on, on your impact on society or the world that's out there uh, and shifting this towards one where everyone is basically um, uh, yeah, like someone that can change things and uh, make an impact in the world. I think that's going to create a super good world. So I'm very positive about uh, the future. Uh, I don't have a TV, so I don't watch the news, but uh, I hear this, uh, this guy in the US sometimes uh, being complaining about it. But uh, uh, I feel confident that we're going to go into a very, very promising and uh, good time. Um, and uh, it's time on a bit of life. Uh, in this age, uh, because it's, uh, it's an age where everyone has the opportunity to make a make, big make impact. I heard this quote uh, like uh, a week ago uh, on what, what the definition of a billionaire is. Uh, and a billionaire is not someone who uh, has a billion, uh, billion dollars, but uh, someone who impacts a billion lives. And uh, I think if I look at you guys in the room, I hope that some of you will pick up that uh, their role in the future of impacting a billion lives by putting something out there. And that's, uh, yeah, that's a cute thing. Thank you. Awesome. Awesome. Thanks so much for your time, Vince. We're literally yes. about to Thanks. we're about to issue our first two Ethereum tokens live right now. That's the next one. Okay, very cool. <laughs> awesome. Thanks for having me, man. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah.